Hello, I'm Dr. Lee. Welcome to Practical Pain Management. In the clinical case, I'll share one clinical case of end plate fracture with discogenic pain and discogram. I'd appreciate it if you could turn on English caption for better communication. Let me describe my patients. He is 58 years old and has had intractable central low back pain. There was an accident. He fell out of the waterway while walking. From that time, he has suffered from low back pain. He received a caudal epidural steroid injection one month ago and per oral medication without improvement. On physical examination, passive lumbar flexion provokes concordant pain and passive lumbar extension produces posterior thigh pain. Please watch the lumbar x-ray series, the AP oblique lateral view of sustained flexion and extension position. I can only find a mild degeneration of lumbar spine. There were no specific findings. I checked the lumbar MRI. It is a sagittal T2 weightage in face image. There are annular tear at L23, L45 posterior central disc. There is a critical disruption of the L3 inferior anterior end plate and increased bone marrow signal intensity of the L3 anterior body. It is a sagittal T2 weighted only water image. There is diffuse high signal intensity of the bone marrow of the L3 anterior body. There is a cortical disruption of the inferior end plate of L3 and transverse high signal intensity of the L34 intervertebral disc. A high signal intensity of the L45 disc and type 1 modic change is noted in the L4. It is a sagittal T2 weighted only fat image. Please observe the signal change in the same area. It is a sagittal T1 weighted image. Compare the signal intensity and configuration of the pathologic lesion with the T2-weighted images. In summary, there is an accident and it can explain the cause of back pain. Pain is centralized in the lumbar spine. Passive lumbar flexion provokes his usual central low back pain. MRI shows and plate fracture of L3 body and bone marrow edema. Disc signal abnormality was detected near the end plate fracture site. Let's go to the clinical practice. I prepared one spinal needle with a kink bevel and two Luo lock syringes. I drew two ml of iohexol from this bottle in one syringe. I put our mixture of botulinum toxin and water-soluble steroid in one syringe. It is a true AP image. Note the inferior end plate of the L3 body. I'm going to target the L3, L4 disc. I turn the CM into caudal tilting AP view. Compare the L3 inferior border with a true AP image. Ipsilateral left oblique image.
I hold the needle with the placenta forceps and approach the needle into the skin entry point under CM guidance. I can handle the needle with the bare hand. From that time, I don't need an x-ray while I manipulating the needle. My needle will go to the Kambin's triangle. It is a demonstration of Kambin's triangle. It is a triangle between the lateral border of superior articular process and upper border of the root of transverse process. I slowly introduced the contrast media into the disc. Contralateral oblique view Both contralateral oblique view helped me evaluate the contrast spread extension. Ipsilateral oblique view Then, I introduced the mixture of steroid and Botox. My second target is L45 disc. I put the needle into the skin on CM guidance and move forward to the canvas triangle. Now I can manipulate the needle with the bare hand. Turn into AP view. Introduce contrast media. Contralateral oblique view. Ipsilateral oblique view Administer mixture of steroid solution Thank you for watching See you again